to introduce you to our next talk. I've been waiting for 60 days for this one. Actually, he agreed to talk a long time ago. He was going to come to the actual Pittsburgh convention. And when we called an audible and changes for a Zoom room, he was like, absolutely, I will be there. Absolutely. So our first lecture to today is Michael Slaughter, president of the United States Playing Card Company. We're going to learn about how he grew up across the street from the Norwood factory. Uh, we're going to, he's going to hopefully regale us with stories of how he rose to presidency at USPCC. He's certainly going to tell us about the merger and the acquisition with Cardamundi and most important at all, especially for my antique and vintage collectors. Michael Slaughter is going to unveil his new goal for the old company museum. Are your interests peaked yet? Moving closer to your screen, moving closer to your screen. Let those ones right now loosen the chat. Come on, let me see some ones. He needs to bask in your virtual love. Live, direct from United States Playing Company's headquarters in Erlanger, Kentucky, Michael Slaughter. Hi, everyone. Uh, wow, that's tough. That is going to be really hard to live up to, and I'm going to adjust my monitor a little bit, to the expectations. Um, if you look at my background, you probably can see I'm not at the U.S. Playing Card Company today. I'm in a spare bedroom like probably so many of you um, since uh, about March um, in my virtual office. So, um, wow, Lee, you really set a tough challenge for me, and, and, um, and I'm looking forward to having this discussion today. First thank off, you, I want to thank you're, everybody. You're going to rise to the level, I'm sure. Can't wait to speak. So please, we're going to hand the reins over to you, and I'm just going to sit back, and I'm going to listen. And, and afterwards, we're going to do a live Q&A. So if anyone has yep. questions, get them ready. Mike, thank yep, you. Go for ahead. For sure. Yeah, for sure. So uh, make a little adjustment. So I'm, my chin is not all you're seeing. So um, yeah, so thank you, first of all, to everyone at 52 Plus Jokers. I think what you guys are doing is absolutely incredible. Um, I didn't have a lot of time to spend uh, in the previous day's conference, but just um, I was hanging out in the lobby waiting to get in and um, just listen to the music and seeing all the great card designs um, and a lot of stuff that I've never seen before um, and seeing some names of people uh, that I, I, I know and uh, really enjoy talking to from your group uh, was just really fantastic. So I hope you guys are having a phenomenal conference. Um, I'm looking forward just to sharing some insight and information with you. Um, Lee has made me sound way more exciting than I am, um, but I'll try to live up to his expectations. So uh, a couple things. So I am Mike Slaughter. I'm a, a CEO and president of the United States Playing Card Company, uh, and I'm incredibly proud of, of that uh, position, that role. I don't take that title lightly, and I think uh, many of you that have met me in the past know that I feel that um, you know, I'm that uh, steward of the company. I'm the person that uh, 100 years from now, I really hope that people look back and say, wow, that Mike Slaughter guy made great decisions uh, about the future of playing cards. And, and we're still using those same kinds of, of, of playing cards today because of the kinds of decisions that he and his team made about the business, about the category, and, and frankly, about the art form. So, um, so I don't take it lightly. I'm not uh, just a business guy that comes in and is looking to make money in the company. Um, I really believe that um, I want to leave a lasting legacy. And we'll talk a little bit about that um, because I, 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 um, I just want you to know that um, this is more to me than just a, a position or a job. So uh, first off, one of the things I'd like to share with you is that um, it's kind of the state of the industry. And I think uh, one of the things that uh, you probably all know is that um, you know, with, with this um, challenge that we've had this year with COVID, that so many people are, are literally uh, coming back to the category and really enjoying playing cards the way all of us have for so many years. And I think a lot of people thought that, you know, category, you know, when you talk to folks, they go, wow, your playing cards are kind of old and tired. And we work really hard to rejuvenate uh, playing cards with new designs and just different ideas and features behind those so that uh, we keep the category interesting. With that said, the category is incredibly healthy right now. Our sales are absolutely through the roof on the retail side of the business, and uh, we're struggling to keep up with the, the demand and the capacity. So, you know, for all of you that were concerned that the category was, you know, in decline, it's not. Uh, but a lot of that credit goes to you as well, because 
Uh, you're the purveyors of the art form, the collectability of playing cards, and um, and, and your 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 stewardship of this collector's side of the business is so incredibly important. Um, and I, I've looked at the auctions and the stuff that's out there on the auctions just amazes me. And uh, and I'm really excited about the box uh, that uh, we provided from U.S. Playing Card. Uh, that is one of those incredibly unique. Uh, and distinct items that um, will never ever be made again. Um, and um, the person that uh, purchases that will truly have um, something incredibly valuable for years to come. So uh, I would like to start, uh, and I'm gonna figure out how to uh, share my screen here. Uh, as you well know, I wanna talk a little bit about um, the acquisition of the United States Playing Card Company uh, by Cardamundi. And uh, I think for many of you, you, you you've known Cardamundi, but maybe not known a lot about the company. Uh, I will tell you that I'm incredibly pleased that we have uh, an owner of this company that um, we will never, ever see this company sold again. Um, they are a playing card company at heart. Um, and as a result, uh, it's a family owned business. And, and they're really proud of their playing card heritage, even though they're in other areas of, of you know, game making. Um, but they're very uh, proud of that, that heritage. And uh, I can't think of a, a better owner uh, for this business. So I'll tell you a little bit about Cardamundi. Uh, so Cardamundi means uh, cards of the world in Latin. Um, Cardamundi is celebrating this year, it's 50 years of, of history. Uh, but they go way back uh, into the 1700s, like uh, so many other playing card companies, in, including including our own. So 1765, um, just about 100 years uh, 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 before uh, even U.S. playing card. Uh, Cardamundi is a producer of other uh, really well-known games. Um, they manufacture games for Monopoly and Pokemon and Uno, uh, just a number of, of, of names that you know. But they also have some great playing card brands like Copag and, and Grimaud and own um, a number of, of those great playing card companies around the world. So I think what you can see is that they're very committed to playing cards and, um, and I, see, I see us collectively being uh, very committed uh, to playing cards for uh, a very, very long time. So Card of Monday, one group, one team, and that's how we think about our business is that uh, um, while we most may still operate somewhat independently uh, in the category, um, we're a collective. And, and, and as you can see, we've got a number of, of physical manufacturing plants, design centers and sales offices all around the world. So what you will see in the longer term future is that um, you know, we sold a bicycle, uh, the bicycle brand, uh, we sold into 118 countries last year. But while we have a really, really strong presence here in the United States, um, we've got lots of opportunity to make sure that we reach uh, consumers who, who uh, want our product elsewhere around the world. This physical footprint that Card Monday gives us really is an opportunity for us to reach so many more uh, people who are interested in our brands. And, and I often say I, I see people uh, that when we put out a design uh, of a new deck and it's on Instagram, I see a lot of international folks going, where can I get that? And the first thing I think of is, uh, you know, how do we reach that 13 or 14 or 15 year old who is seeing that and falling in love with our product like so many of you have and falling in love with our brand and saying, I want, I want that because it is the world's best. It is truly the world's reference in playing cards. And when I play with a deck of bicycle, I'm really playing with something that I truly value. It's something very personal to people. So um, I'm excited about our ability to get um, more great product into the hands of consumers all around the world. So our mission, we want to be the world's reference as a company uh, in, in uh, playing cards and board games. And our vision is really, you know, making sure that we can bring people together. We know the value of being socially and emotionally of when people get together. And cards uh, have a way of stimulating that. Um, you know, we can all go back to think about when we first 
you know, got our first deck of cards and we played a game with a brother, a sister, a cousin, an aunt, an uncle. So many of us learned from our grandparents, different games. And those emotional connections run deep. And those are the, that, that is why our vision is, is to make sure that we're connecting people through our products. And our purpose, we want to share the magic of playing together. I cannot think of a better statement from a company. We want to share the magic of playing together. It is so important, uh, just like this meeting, in bringing people together. And I've watched some of the chat and the camaraderie amongst you. Um, so I, I hope you believe in our mission, our vision, and our purpose the way that we do. So I'm going to take a little bit of a walk back in history. Uh, so I know a lot of you have had the opportunity to visit the Norwood facility, and, you, and many of you have visited our Erlanger facility. Uh, but the old Norwood facility, I think uh, you all are aware, um, is, is being deconstructed, and there will be something uh, very new very soon, beginning in the spring, um, on that particular piece of property. And, um, you know, there's an amazing history and there are so many people that tell me stories about having visited U.S. Playing Card at some point in their, in their lifetime and what it meant to them. And many, many people talk about the museum and the gift shop. And I just want to kind of tell you uh, what it means to me. Um, I'm 58 years old. I grew up in Norwood. I spent the first 26 years of life there. Um, I grew up uh, literally across the street from the plant. Um, I had a lot of friends that, that literally did grow up. I mean, right there were their homes at the very edge of the, of the property. Um, but this plant, uh, Norwood was an industrial town when I was growing up. Uh, Alice Chalmers, a uh, 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 Caterpillar plant, um, uh, General Motors, um, a Chevrolet plant, a lot of heavy industrial um, uh, businesses. And U.S. Playing Card was so iconic because of its building and that clock tower. And, and if you ask people in Norwood, and you can go out and actually read some of the uh, comments that uh, citizens made uh, during the uh, town council hearings about what should go on this property. And every, everyone in the city, everyone in that town said, you have to find a way to save that building. Unfortunately, when the developers got in there, there was such deterioration. I mean, you're talking about a building that was built in the late 1890s, um, was really dysfunctional in order, you know, from a, a standpoint of trying to um, repurpose and reuse that building. But they did everything they could. They really wanted to save that entire structure. Unfortunately, what they found is that, um, you know, from the time we had sold it to the time developers were actually in there, that the, the building had uh, decomposed quite a bit. Uh, a, a, the building is actually a, a wooden uh, structure, and it is surrounded with brick. And the, the, the degradation of the wood just said, look, we can't, we can't save this building. But what was great is that the people, the developer that acquired this property uh, was local. And they understood, they really sat down and they talked with the people in the city and they really understood what this meant to the people in the city of Norwood and the historic significance. And they themselves have become um, aficionados of the history of U.S. playing card. It is amazing what they tell me because of what they have, have done to learn about the history of the building. And they're doing everything they can to preserve um, that main clock tower. And I'm going to show you a picture in just a second of uh, what the rest of that property looks like right now. Uh, but you can see, um, I put the center, center picture was uh, a, pi a picture taken back in the uh, late 90s uh, of the building. And uh, she looks in pretty good shape. Uh, obviously, if you look at the picture at the left, uh, that is what the area looked at like uh, before the clock tower which was actually uh, uh, added onto the building. Uh, and of course you can see the other pictures in, in various um, uh, uh, stages of deconstruction. So we'll move on to that next page. And um, so before the building, uh, they did any deconstruction work, uh, I took a walk through the building. Uh, you know, it's one of those, um, it's almost a little bit like a funeral of sorts because you know that this is going to go away. 
uh, that we're going to lose this history forever. And I took some pictures and I'll just kind of walk you through. So I'm at the front entrance. Um, the next picture is of the boardroom. Um, you can see the old brass uh, fixtures. A lot of the offices in the building look like that. Uh, then uh, the next picture is, um, you know, after all the equipment's been moved, uh, this particular uh, part of the manufacturing floor um, was exactly where playing cards were made. In fact, if you look at the floor, you'll see uh, starch, uh, that white uh, material on the floor. Uh, there were a handful of bags of starch, and starch was used in the paper making process. Uh, so uh, that was there on the floor. On the back of the building is the power plant that powered the building, and that's the next picture to the right. And then I saw this little lonely uh, picture of a bicycle card. And um, for whatever crazy reason, I, I just saw that and it was lonely and it, it had a lot of meaning. Uh, the picture on the left, that front entrance, as you can see, someone uh, removed the letters, uh, vandalized the building, removed the letters that said the United States Playing Card Company. I wish I would have been smart enough to go and vandalize those because that's a, a, such a great historic reference I would have liked to have. And the picture on the right at the bottom is this incredible grand staircase that took you up to the president's office in the boardroom. And it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, down below was uh, a massive walk-in safe where they literally did keep the money in the day. Um, they, you know, uh, they, you know there, weren't, there weren't wire transfers at the time that this building was built. Um, and if you've been to our facility in um, Erlanger, uh, in our lobby, you might remember, uh, I, I was able to save one of the safes uh, that was on wheels, uh, weighs about 4,800 pounds, and we somehow managed to find a way to, to get that into our lobby. So I was really happy to save, save that. Um, now, these pictures are my absolute favorite. And I saw yesterday, um, I saw in, uh, I think it might've been in the uh, Instagram page for 52 plus jokers, someone said, can we get prints of those pictures? And for me, I'm telling you, I, I look at this and I, the, the, the power of these pictures is just incredible. And I'll tell you a little bit why. So when I was a kid uh, growing up in Norwood, uh, we, we, we lived on our bikes like so many of you did. And we rode everywhere. We did everything. We were always on our bicycle. Well, I'll show you a picture in a minute, but across the street was a, a baseball field, um, a big, big park. And it was called Doral Field. And I literally spent a lot of my childhood there, my teenage years there, and even some of my adult years there, playing in that park every single day. And one of the things that we would do is um, we'd go, we would ride our bikes around the back of the plant. And um, there were always cards back then were being discarded, right? Uh, so the uh, folks at the factory would sit them out there by the garbage and we would take them and we would take those cards and put them in the uh, spokes of our bicycles and, you know, make that flipping sound as if we, we had an engine. Uh, and, and that's probably the first place that I actually got a deck of cards and learned how to play cards uh, was, was because I, I got them off the, the back dock at, at U.S. Playing Card. And, um, but this clock tower was so iconic for us because rather we were at the park or we were at the swimming pool, or we were hanging out at a friend's house. You know, back then, you know, we didn't have phones with, with clocks on them. We didn't, none of us wore a watch. But that clock told us every day where to be. And my dad worked in a factory uh, in Cincinnati uh, for Jim Beam Distilleries uh, for 40 years. But my dad, when he got home at four o'clock, you know, he'd been working all day, and mom prepared dinner, and it was ready by 4.15. So my dad would arrive at four o'clock, he'd go get a bath and he'd come out and man, if you weren't home by 4.15, your meal was gonna be cold because dad was gonna eat. And uh, so the symbolism of that clock tower for me, and, and maybe that's why I'm somebody today that I'm always on time for everything. Um, and, uh, but it's absolutely incredible. Um, I had only been in that clock tower one time uh, before, I worked with U.S. Playing Card, and it was when I was in third grade, Mrs. Feller's third grade class field trip was to U.S. Playing Card, and that time, um, and, and it had very narrow stairs, I remember, you know, 
big, heavy iron stairs. And we went up into that clock tower and it was absolutely fascinating. And, and every time I look at these photos, it reminds me a little bit of Back to the Future. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, it's such a powerful statement. Um, and, and what I'm going to tell you in a few minutes is that what's great is the, the, uh, the developer is going to save uh, that clock tower. These implements inside will stay. They will remain. They will not be functional. But they're going to restore the clocks so they are actually working clocks on the building, which is very cool. So if you look at that center picture, that's the main boulevard. I'm actually standing in the, in the, the, uh, just above the clock tower um, where there used to be bells that rang. Those bells are no longer there. They were remo removed in the, uh, the mid nineties, if I, if I recall. Uh, but you used to hear those bells because they struck on the hour. Um, and they were also something that was used way back when there was a radio station, WSAI in, um, in Cincinnati, uh, and those bells rang at the hour of when the uh, show on WSAI uh, was conducted for bridge play. There was actually bridge on the radio. So this picture in the middle is just a, a great picture of, um, you know, down that main boulevard. Um, my house would be out of picture, uh, way to the left, uh, kind of on the other side of the park. Uh, but um, as you can see, uh, this is pretty recent and uh, still, still a, uh, a very beautiful, beautiful city. So um, I just took some other pictures while I was in the plant. Uh, as you can see, uh, there's a mission and vision statement. Uh, and I can't tell you that our mission, mission and vision statement has really changed that much um, you know, in the last uh, 25 years. We're still committed to innovation. We're still committed to the customer and the consumer and our operational processes of working very hard to make the world's best playing cards. And we still are committed to that today. Uh, I told you about that uh, picture over on the left. Uh, and what you also can't see is when I was a kid, uh, the left-hand side of the factory is a big building there. And uh, at that time, uh, the United States Playing Card Company also printed uh, books and uh, a number of other promotional materials. So that building there, the workers would hang out of the windows and watch us play baseball. And um, uh, so you can see a couple fields. My goal was always to be able to get it over the fence of that field and hit one of those houses there on the left. Um, I can't tell you that I ever, I know I got it over the fence, but I never did. I put it in a front yard or two. Uh, but, um, but yeah, I spent a lot of my days there um, and just phenomenal memories. Uh, and that park is still there. And um, I visited, visited that park uh, and envisioned myself uh, still out there on the playing field uh, 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 when I was, was taking some uh, uh, pictures of the plant uh, just a couple weeks ago. The next page is the very states of deconstruction. And this is kind of sad. It is incredibly interesting to watch. And uh, the work that, um, that was done is, is just uh, of the highest quality. I, I, I am so proud of uh, the company that is working on this because of their commitment to the preservation of the materials. So one really, really cool thing is if you look at the center picture and you see that um, uh, uh, big facade there, I asked the developer, I said, man, I love that. I said, God, I would so love to have that because I think it would make a significant presence if we can display that somewhere in a museum or somewhere, even if it's on our, our property in Erlang. And he calls me and says, Hey, I've got that facade on a pallet for you. And um, all you have to do is come and pick it up. And I sent a message to my, one of my facilities uh, managers. And the next day, here it was. Um, so it's phenomenal. Uh, I feel so proud that we're able to save such an important, beautiful artifact from the factory. Um, you'll see that upper picture on the right-hand side. That is what is left of the front facade of the building and the clock tower. And of course, you see the smokestack. Uh, so again, various states of deconstruction. Um, uh, we saved a little bit of brick. The brick, for the most part, uh, has been bundled up. And that brick is being used in a project in San Antonio, Texas, 
um, as a, a company has, has purchased that brick uh, to pave walkways and uh, even, even some roadways. So uh, all of this material didn't end up in a landfill. Uh, it's repurposed and, and will have another life. And then um, here we are. So here's our facility today. I know a number of you uh, had the opportunity to visit and take a tour, uh, but I thought there's probably a number of you that uh, have not. So I wanted to show you, uh, here's where we have been since uh, uh, July of 2009. Uh, as you can see, it's a very different facility than what you would have seen in Norwood. Um, it, it is, I love manufacturing. I love walking through a, a manufacturing plant and I can tell you, this is one of the most amazing operations uh, that I've worked in in my career. Uh, I've worked for companies like Campbell Soup and, and Hefty Reynolds and Bristol Meyer and SC Johnson. And we made a lot of consumer goods and a lot of uh, products, you know, like Windex and, 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 and Ziploc plastic bags and the, and the like. The hardest thing I've, we have ever done or I've ever seen done uh, is to actually manufacture a high quality playing card. Um, it is so much more complex than just printing on paper. And one of the things that I show you down below is a little bit of the secret to our sauce. And that is we're the only playing card company in the world that actually manufactures its own card stock. We have our own paper formulations. We have our own paste formulations. We have our unique cutting approaches. And that is what differentiates a bicycle playing card or a B playing card from any other card in the world uh, from a quality standpoint. And that's because we can control all of the attributes. For, so for those of you that are magicians, those of you who are cardists, our handling characteristics are unique and we created those capabilities that only we can do. So it's something we're incredibly proud of. Um, we are so focused on main maintaining that uh, quality and capability uh, on your behalf um, and, and just appreciate the way you support our brands and business because um, we don't want to just be a printing company. So um, this is uh, my final page from a, uh, let's take a look at the building in Norwood. So you saw the various states of deconstruction. Um, you see the beautiful iconic um, clock tower. And I said to you earlier about, I took a picture from just above the clock tower where the, the uh, Caroline bells used to hang. Um, so now you see that. But uh, there are some renderings that the developer has of what is the facility going to look like uh, going forward. And they're going to repurpose that product into a multi-use facility, which is great. Um, there will be housing, there will be retail. And with, um, with a little bit of luck, uh, there'll be a museum somewhere on that property. Um, one of the buildings, and it's really hard uh, to see in this rendering, but that, that building, that if you look down on the left-hand side of your screen and across the roof, it says market. Uh, that is going to be a really unique uh, uh, place. Originally, that was where we were going to build a museum. But of course, you know, the, the, the uh, scale, the size of that building is really, really large. And we felt it was just too large for us from a museum uh, standpoint to be able to maintain and cost-wise and so forth. So they've repurposed that particular building into a marketplace, which will have unique vendors uh, who rotate through and, and really create a destination for people to come and visit. With that in mind, that's what makes it really cool for us to potentially have a museum on-site on property. And a, a, a portion of where that museum might fall is if you look at the picture on the right-hand side uh, top, you'll see windows below the clock tower. Each of those areas is just about 400 square feet, and uh, it would make a very, very cool place uh, to be able to display some uh, historic materials around U.S. playing card and even tell the story. And one of the things that the developer is hoping to do, but they're not sure that they can, is actually allow people up into that tower kind of as an observation tower or a, a destination to visit. So, um, so if we can repurpose that space, that will be one area that we would like to go in. Uh, another area is there's gonna be plenty of retail shops. Uh, so we may have a store on premise. Um, all of these things are in discussion and in the works. 
And I just don't have any real details that I can provide at this point, but I'm hopeful that we can, we can come to an agreement and make all this happen. So uh, lastly, uh, one thing, I'm gonna throw a sales pitch out to all of you. I just wanna give you a little bit of where else does um, US Playing Card and where does our brand go? And one of the things that we really found out from consumers is that people who play cards play lots of other games. And we knew, you know, US Playing Card in the past had a heritage of being in games. And the category is on fire right now for party games and social games. And our marketing team came together and just really had some great ideas. And um, so it, it, the product that you see over on the right are games that we have launched. They are absolutely fantastic. Our team's done a phenomenal job on the artwork. And it's really a brand extension of our legacy of building on fun and building on the social aspect of playing cards. So this is one more way for us to bring uh, new users, new players into the category who might just be game players and we have an opportunity to introduce them into playing cards as well. So I know a lot of you are, are probably uh, uh, fans of the gentleman on the, the left. His name is Will Wheaton. Uh, Will is uh, not just a, uh, a TV star, um, Will is also somebody, uh, we consider him a games ambassador and he's doing some work for us, but Will is very involved in um, the social uh, games and uh, is helping us uh, promote that business. So very exciting place for us to go. It enables us to keep our company, um, you know, broad enough that we keep a healthy, healthy business and uh, continue to grow. Uh, so um, that is, um, that's my presentation. Um, I want to be mindful. I haven't even looked at the time and people who know me know that I could probably talk for a couple more hours, but, um, but uh, one thing Lee wanted me to talk about and God knows why, but uh, I, to talk about my meteoric rise to the presidency of uh, U.S. Playing Card. So I told you, I, uh, I grew up in Norway. Um, I, um, uh, I, 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 went to, I graduated from Norwood, uh, Norwood schools, uh, Williams Avenue grade school and Norwood high school. Uh, I'm a alumni member uh, and I'm really proud. I'm actually um, I'm a, a, a member of my high school's hall of fame. Um, and, and I'm really proud of that because uh, there's some really big names in there. Uh, that are pretty amazing that I didn't even know went to my high school. Um, but it's one of those uh, small accomplishments for a small town kid uh, that I am proud of. Uh, growing up, I did not have this massive aspiration to uh, run the U.S. playing card company. I, um, I, I joined, uh, I, I worked for a retailer for 11 years uh, locally in Cincinnati. I, uh, I joined Campbell Soup Company. My career took off. I worked for a number of consumer packaged goods companies and um, at the time, um, uh, I was working for a company uh, called Hefty Reynolds, Hefty Trash Bags, Reynolds Limited Foil. And um, I happened to be on a plane one day talking to a gentleman, and um, he was a recruiter. And we get to talk, and he asked me what I do, and I told him, and uh, he goes, uh, wow, I got this great job uh, with a company, but you've never heard of the company. And I said, oh, yeah, well, what, what is it? And he says, it's, uh, it's, it's located in Erlanger, Kentucky. It's called the United States Playing Card Company. And I said, no, they're over on Beach Street in Norwood. And, um, and the guy's head spun around like Beetlejuice. Uh, he was like, well, how do you know that? And I said, well, I grew up across the street from the company. And he says to me, he goes, you have to be kidding me. He says, I have told 100 people about this job. He said, and every time I tell someone, they tell me, you, wait a minute, they don't still make playing cards in the United States, do they? And it, so people weren't really connecting to the company. And I, we started talking about this and he goes, I think you'd be perfect. And I said, well, thank you. I appreciate that. What's the job? He said, what's well, to run the casino division? Well, I can tell you, I had only been in a casino one time in my entire life. I, I'm not good at gambling. I don't gamble. Um, and I wasn't really even a, a huge par card player at that time. Um, and I said, yeah, I said, that's probably, I'm probably not the right guy. I just don't know anything about that industry. And he told me, he says, no, you're perfect. And I said, why? And he said, well, they want to bring different kind of thinking into the company. 
and I'd like for you to come and interview. So I went ahead and I interviewed. Uh, at the time, I was living in, in Chicago, Illinois, and, um, and my wife said, well, you know, I'm a, my wife is a huge believer in fate, and she said, there's a reason that you met him. There's a reason that this is going to take us back home. And uh, in that, uh, there was a reason. Um, my parents were getting older. It gave me a phenomenal chance to experience the last years of their life uh, because I literally had to move in and live with them while I was trying to sell my home in, in Chicago. And during that time, we also adopted uh, two boys here in Cincinnati and uh, after my, my, my brother-in-law's uh, passing. And it gave us the chance to uh, give them a life and a future, and um, so it was. It was. Um, it was fate. Um, so I come into the casino division. I spend about a year working in that. Um, we 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 started to get things back on on track. Um, I moved in. I was asked to move in and run global sales and marketing uh, for the company, and I did that uh, for a short time. And then in 2014, I got the opportunity to become a president. And um, I'm so proud, again, as I mentioned earlier, I'm so proud of that role because I really do feel that uh, I'm a steward of this business. Um, I, I have that connection that it's really important for me uh, from a legacy standpoint that when I'm done with my career, that this business is on such sound footing that, again, people 100 years from now look back and say, wow, um, that guy was the leader that was so needed to make sure that this category is still here. Now, I will tell you this, I've also surrounded myself with really great people on my management team. And those people are so important um, because they buy into that steward strategy as well. And, um, and they all work uh, on a daily basis on your behalf to make sure we keep the, the category strong and healthy. So, so can we open this up to questions? I'd, be, I'd love Absolutely. to hear anything I can. Can we, can we get some ones in the chat room for Michael Slaughter? That was terrific. I learned so much about you. I was, I was glowing when you were talking about your youth and playing baseball across the street. And this was awesome, Michael. Thank you so much for this. Well, you're quite welcome, Lee. Just so you know, I was an impeccable athlete. Um, I scored a number of touchdowns on that field. I hit hundreds of home runs. And um, yeah, and, and, and I, still, I still flourish in my own imagination of what a great athlete I was. <laughs> Fantastic. So we, we're, we're going to get some questions in the chat room. While that's happening, I have a question. And ah, it's something that you and I have talked about. You and I talked about last, uh, a couple of months ago. Yeah. And I don't know if everyone in the chat knows about this, but talking about the old Norwood property. Sure. Uh, in 1899, when they built the factory, they actually dropped a cornerstone. And in that yep. cornerstone is a time capsule. Can we talk about that for a minute? We absolutely can. So uh, the developers, again, like you said, they're, these guys are like archaeologists to agree. They really are taking a tremendous amount of pride in the deconstruction of this building. And they are so committed to finding that time capsule. They have met with a number of people, historians, architects, historic architects that actually have tried to help them identify where that time capsule is. So they have basically, as you've seen, they've completely deconstructed that building and they unfortunately have not uncovered the time capsule. Now, I had an old timer who was a vice president at US Playing Card that was a friend of my father's. And I asked him about that. Uh, he, had been, he had been with the company for 30 years. And he told me where he thought it was based on rumor in, during his you know, tenure at the company. Unfortunately, what we now believe is that when the clock tower was constructed, that either that time capsule was removed or it was made permanent as part of that foundation that holds the clock tower. So the sad part is we may never know and we may never see because there, the concern was we would have to destabilize or they would have to destabilize the clock tower to get to the time capsule. It's such a great story. You know, I, I wrote you and I said, can we have Indiana Jones music playing when we're talking about this? This is such a fab. You can go back into old newspaper clippings and find stories about A.O. Russell Day in 1899. It was th this month in October, so it's very topical. 
and they, they put a time capsule in with playing cards and catalogs and other artifacts. Ah, we can only uh, dream about it, right? Yeah, Lee, I'll tell you, I enjoy every single day uh, on Instagram uh, reading the uh, materials that Jason McKinstry comes out with. Uh, I find it absolutely fascinating. I am a fan of all kinds of history, but for whatever reason, I mean, when, you know, um, his paper Empire's book, when I read that book, man, it is just, it is enthralling. It's almost like a mystery to learn and understand all of this phenomenal history. And I know he's working on something around the uh, U.S. playing cards history. And I can't wait to read that because um, as much as I wish I knew everything about our history, there are so many of you that really, really know the history of U.S. playing cards so much better than we do. Um, I, but I can't wait to see that because I think, um, I think that's just going to be a phenomenal and, and really interesting uh, uh, book. The, I couldn't um, agree anymore. That would, yeah, he, I, I did see uh, a couple questions and um, I see the one I love uh, using sonar. Uh, could we locate that? Um, believe it or not, they've actually used some ground uh, sonar to look for the time capsule. Again, have had no luck. Um, they're, they believe that uh, where that, because of what I've told them where I believe the time capsule is, that uh, they're just not able to penetrate that area using uh, ground radar, but the developer actually brought a company in that does that. Um, I also saw a question out there about, um, you know, when are we going to be able to, um, you know, are, or are we going to see us print uh, some of the historic backs? Um, I can tell you all of that is under consideration right now. Uh, we want to be able to bring some of those historic backs. You know, one of the things that it's always a really hard decision to reprint something because you know, do you hurt the historic significance? And, and we want to make sure that we don't damage that, especially for collectors. Not that, not that uh, reproductions happen all the time in many industries and, and don't damage the, the value of, of, of collectability. But we want to make sure that we're true to the art form. Uh, we, have to, we have to do this in a, a really process of which we just don't put a bunch of stuff out on the market and then it's not interesting. So uh, we will be true to ourselves, but you can count that we will be coming forward with uh, some of those historic designs in the near future. You know, we're waiting with bated breath, all of us, yeah. you yeah. know, because that's what we love. And we appreciate that you know that we love you guys and we, we have all this history that all we want to do is share it with you guys. So yeah. we're so thrilled that you're here. Members, throw some ones in the chat. Non-members, throw some ones in the chat. United States Playing Card Company and Card Monday employees, throw some ones in the chat. This, this is spectacular. If you have questions, please put them in the chat. Uh, we've got more to come. Someone asked, Mike, what is your favorite United States Playing Card Company Russell Morgan deck of cards? Oh, my goodness. And that is so difficult to say because um, every time I see a deck, um, it is, it, it, it just, there is, there is just, the artwork is phenomenal. And, and, and I'll be honest, I, what a lot of you do and a lot of the folks, you know, from say Kings Wild and, 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 and other companies that take, uh, you know, and, and, and create decks using our bicycle name, the artwork is absolutely incredible. And I'm so proud that we're able to allow the use of our name on those decks when it's incredibly high quality artwork. Um, uh, but, you know, for me, one of the things I, you know, it's a standard deck of bicycle and it's the, you know, it's the 808 rider back. And, and honest to goodness, that is my favorite deck. It just, I, I watch, I, I, I love watching when I'm on television or when people are on television and they're using a rider back deck. Every magician I ever see on, on television is using our cards. So uh, that for me is just the power of that. I love the imagery of um, uh, the, our ace of spades. I, I think it's just so beautiful and so iconic. Uh, I always said, I don't have any tattoos. I've always said, if I ever get a tattoo, it's going to be the ace of spades. Um, I, there's something powerful and meaningful to me. I love the fact that, um, you know, that uh, Lady Liberty on the, uh, or the goddess of freedom that is on the Capitol, I should say, uh, is in that deck. And someone had the wherewithal and the mindset to take that art and, and make it a compelling piece of their product 
you know, 135 years ago just blows me away. So I really do just love the standard bicycle deck. It's my favorite. It's a classic for a reason, right? Yeah. And it's so funny because I talk to different people. Some people love red, some people love blue. And I'm a, I, I probably tend to love the red deck more than blue. Uh, but again, I, 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 it's so funny because it's all personal choice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the questions real quick in the chat room is if someone came to Erlanger, would they be able to take a tour? So we don't open our facility uh, for tours. Um, and there's a couple reason that we, reasons that we don't. There's a number of um, laws that we have to, uh, both uh, OSHA, uh, that we have to uh, uh, comply with. Um, we are always, always mindful also of making sure we protect our trade secrets and how we do things. Uh, so yeah, we don't, we don't openly give tours. It was very unique when um, you, know, uh, you had your convention in Cincinnati um, and, and we were, that was, I won't say an opportunity of a lifetime, but it was a very unusual opportunity. Um, and uh, who knows, you may have an uh, opportunity uh, to come back to the Cincinnati area at some point in time. And, uh, and, and, and we might have that, that uh, chance to, to give you uh, a tour, uh, a facility of the tour again. You can count on it. You can count on it. We will be there with bells on. Yeah. Well, hopefully it's, uh, you're there because we've got a museum and you guys want to be part of it. Uh, somehow be part of the grand opening. Who knows? Um, you know, if there's an opportunity to involve uh, any of you in that, we most definitely would, would like to do that. So. It seems like you guys really care. And it's so wonderful. You know, there was a while where Tom and Judy also would come down there and help to look at the collection and actuate yeah. everything. Yeah, and they, they said, like, I see, I see we, Judy's on here today. Yeah, she is. And yeah. some of the other Dawson member, family members are here too. Awesome. It's great to have everyone here. Uh, but they, they would come back and they would say, like, I, I wish they would do more. We want more. And obviously, you know, we, we all want as much as possible. But now it seems like you're here and we, we, there is no more. It's, you're right in front of us and you, you're doing this amazing work with the museum and with Cardamundi and their lineage and their history. We are literally living in a golden age of playing cards right now. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't disagree. And, you know, again, one of my missions as president, and it's been a mission for a while, is that um, I want to make sure that we, we are um, ensuring the future of the collection that Judy is familiar with. And uh, I, I want to make it public. I don't want it to be just in a museum. I want to digitize it and put it in a digital museum where anyone in the world can visit uh, those, the, that artwork. Um, there's no reason that we shouldn't be able to do that. Uh, it takes a lot of money. And, you know, with a new company, a new acquisition, there's things that we have to work through from a business standpoint uh, before we can spend, uh, you know, time on that. But it is, it is something that um, uh, I have spoken with the owners of the company. Uh, they understand the need to preserve those uh, materials. By the way, I visited a playing card museum in uh, Turnout, Belgium. Uh, it is very cool. Um, they actually have a, uh, a three working presses in the building from the 1800, and there's a massive steam engine that they preserve that drives that. So um, I might not have a museum like that, uh, but I also look at a museum as maybe there's other uh, value to it. What if there was a design center there? What if there was a, um, um, you know, a, a play cafe where people could come and enjoy the museum, uh, grab a bicycle branded beer, uh, and, and then, um, you know, uh, have gameplay right there. So there's a, there's a lot there to the vision. Um, again, it, you know, it's, it's, you know, when you're, when you're running a company the size of our company, um, it's complex. And as much as those are the things you want to go and do, um, sometimes they're difficult to accomplish, but, uh, but I'm working towards it. Let me just say, I don't normally drink beer, but when I do, it's bicycle branded beer. Awesome. Yeah. You're like the most interesting guy in the world. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. One question from Dave Hoffmeister, you know, he's a local. Yep, I know Dave. Your bird. He wants to know, do you, do you keep one deck of every custom deck that you make? We actually do. Uh, we keep we keep one deck for reference. Um, we also keep a sheet, and part of the reason for doing that is a quality check. 
So if we would, if we, you know, face it, when you're think you, this year, we will print five billion images. Okay. And if anyone thinks that you can print five billion impressions without a flaw, that's flawed thinking. Um, what we what we do know is um, we on average have a flaw in one part per million. So we know we're going to have defects, right? You know, if we were a car company, we would recall those. You'd come in, we'd put a new radiator in, and you'd be happy and leave. Um, unfortunately, and we do our best from a quality standpoint. We are constantly on a mission. You know, we have a quality lab, a quality team. And we assess everything on a day, hourly, da daily basis by shift. And we're constantly striving to improve quality. Um, but in order to get the kinds of um, cut and feel that we have, we are literally using machines that were made in the 1940s and the 1950s. Our last, our last punch that we used to make bicycle was 1956. Now we've retrofitted all those, right? And we've made that equipment optimally, optimally as efficient as it possibly can be. But in order to get the cut and the feel that everybody, especially in your world, Lee, likes, you can't replicate it on another machine. And if you could, somebody else would have done it. And my dear friends at Cardamonde told me, for we have tried to replicate your cards for the longest time. And we've never been able to do that. Yeah. And one of our owners, Jean-Louis, he said, Michael, he said, we've never been able to beat you. So we're looking forward to joining with you. And, right. and it was just a statement that he really understood that we have something so unique and differentiated and superior. But yes, quality is a challenge. It always will be. Um, you know, when you have your own uh, formulations of, of paper and, and so forth, uh, and, and just unique processes, but but yeah, we um, we're challenged by that, um, and and um, you know just uh, uh, you know as, as 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 Dave you know sees our our cards, um, you know we want to get better at all of it. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, it it seems like you are. It yeah. seems like the decks that are coming out are really good, really good. Sure. Like as you know. I just worked on a project with you guys and yeah. I worked very closely with Tiffany and Ashley and I, it was great. It was such a wonderful experience. It was and so thank, easy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for saying that because um, I would tell you uh, our custom team are, are really just, they're great at working with the customer and, and trying to ensure that they, they absolutely uh, execute their project uh, the way that they envision it. Um, and I appreciate you recognizing them. They're great folks, and, and, uh, and everyone at U.S. Playing Card approaches things the same way. Absolutely. Can we get some ones in the chat room for the, uh, the lovely ladies of United States Playing Card Company? And more, more ones for Mike Slaughter as well. This is, this is fantastic, Mike. Again, thank you so much for your time. We yeah. still have more time, so if you have questions, please put them in the chat. We'll get to them. Yeah, we'll get yeah to I'll hang out as long as, you, as long as you find it interesting. Oh, I could, we could talk playing cards all day, man. You want a weird geeky fact while you were talking about the machinery in your factory? Yeah. So here's, here's a weird one for you. Okay. The guy who I think installed all of that, that, that machinery, his name was Oscar Fournier. How weird is that? I know. <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, I actually saw that in a historic document and I just laughed. I couldn't believe it. Um, also, I, uh, I looked at an employee role um, that, you know, was like in the 50s. And we had someone with the exact same you know, Fournier name. Fournier. Yeah. None of them probably. The world is related. very small. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. right now people are asking about the 808 Club. First okay. off, could you explain quickly what the 808 Club is and, sure. and what, it's, what the future looks like for the 808 Club? Yeah. So, um, so um, the 808 Club is defunct. Um, a, a number of years ago, what we tried to do was create a subscription club. Uh, we thought it'd be incredibly cool from a, having these incredibly unique designs. And we found out we just weren't really at that point in time positioned to execute it as well as we would have liked. Um, so we chose to close that down. Um, 
I wouldn't, I would not, um, I, I, in the future, I think there's an opportunity for us to do that and create a, a collector's uh, type, um, you know, uh, subscription. But there's a lot, of, a lot of companies out there that are doing a phenomenal job, um, you know, with subscription boxes that we actually make their product for them. And um, so we don't necessarily want to be uh, competitors to that. Um, unless we can do it really differentiated in something that is, is, is so more meaningful. Um, you know, one thing, and, um, you know, I'd be curious, I, I love your t-shirt, by the way, I, I could have worn that t-shirt today, um, but instead, uh, let's see, I don't know if you can see, I've got on a blue uh, Nike golf shirt with bicycle. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, it was either this or the Jerry's nugget jacket. I figured <laughs> this, this is the better, this is the better. Dude, that Jerry's nugget jacket is a killer. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I saw that and it's it's fantastic. Um, I might wear it tomorrow. You'll you'll be you know what? There's somebody's going to want to auction you then. Just be careful. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So you know one of the things that we've talked about and 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 be curious, you know, you guys can uh, share with us. One of the things we thought about is you know for me, I again I love bicycle. There's just something about the script of bicycle. The, the, and there's something about the artwork. And, and, and one of the things we thought is, wow, this could be a really cool lifestyle brand, you know, t-shirts and jackets and hats and uh, art prints. And there's so many things where truly we could expand our brand. Um, and I'd just be curious what people think of that. Is that something that interests people, you know, even beyond collector, uh, you know, um, I, I don't go to the gym very often, but uh, when I do, I, I usually, because I've got a bunch of bicycle shirts, I'll wear a bicycle shirt. And I can't tell you the number of times people stop me and go, where can I get a shirt? Where, where did you buy that? And I just think that's really cool. Um, and I go, man, there's something here. But I'd be curious to hear from people what, what folks think about something like that. I, for one, would, you know, of course, you have my vote. I'm sure. Right now in the chat, throw some ones if you think this is a good idea. More apparel from United States Playing Card Company. And you, you guys are doing something with Jackson Jokers. Is that still, is that still happening? Yeah, we haven't uh, worked with Jackson Jokers in a number of years. Jackson Jokers uh, took a new focus. Um, um, and in fact, I just spoke to the owner a couple Saturdays ago. He called me. Um, but yeah, he's, he's taken a different focus. And, um, and it's not the, his price points were just too high. And um, you know, with the way he wanted to operate, he couldn't reach the consumers. We just didn't think it was a good, a good marriage for the brand. Yeah. Okay, so you're going to bring it in-house. You're going to do it the right way. You're going to do it the way you think it needs to be done. That's yeah, exciting. Absolutely. Yeah, we're, we're really committed and loyal to our branding, um, you know, and, and we don't want to deviate from that. Uh, you know, the, probably the most powerful asset that we own, it's not the laminating machines. It's not the punches. It's that brand. And we truly see it with the tremendous opportunity to be a global brand. And, you know, our goal is, is, is to reach more and more consumers who are as passionate about our brand as we are. Well, you're sitting in front of a hundred people that love your brand at such a geeky level <laughs> that if there's anything that we can do to help, obviously you just ask and we'll be there the first line. Yeah, absolutely. I just saw a comment from uh, Bruno. Bruno, you're correct. Um, yeah, since he shirts in Cincinnati and they do have a website, um, we do work with them locally. They have two stores and, um, and there's a, a selection of bicycle shirts that you can purchase out there. So uh, thank you for, for putting that out there. Really quick, there was, it flew by. I didn't actually see who it was, but someone asked, if they think that their mother was an inspector in the, in the plant in the you early 1900s. Yeah, uh, yeah, I just saw that. So I don't know that um, I have employee records back to that. And, and unfortunately the employee records aren't organized where I could go thumb through and, and find something. Um, one of the things that we do have that's really unique is we've got boxes and they're not sorted. We have boxes of employee badges that when they worked there, they wore, but then you, you know, it had your picture on it. And, and I got to tell you, they're all black and white and they all look like mud shots, you know, and nobody <laughs> smiled. They really do, but they're, they're fascinating to kind of sort through. Uh, again, unfortunately, we want to make that part of our employee museum, or I'm sorry, our, our playing card museum. Um, and, and I don't know how many people um, know this, but I've worked with uh, Valerie Hotchkiss 
Um, you know, Valerie is a, a professor at Vanderbilt University, and Vanderbilt has a very nice collection of playing cards. They also have a book collection um, uh, that they bought from us, the Clulo collection. Um, I had all of these books sitting in a cabinet, and I was very concerned about those books. And, and I, you know, books deteriorate, right, if they're not, made, if they're not housed correctly. And we sold that collection to um, Vanderbilt University. And they have had an amazing, amazing following from all around the world. They've had people come to Vanderbilt to see those books. And many of those books are, uh, are all about games and gameplay and rules. And we all remember, or at least I do, having a, a parent or a grandparent, an aunt or uncle, that you would state something when you were growing up and they would say, well, according to Hoyle, and I never knew what the hell they were talking about. I didn't know who this Hoyle guy was. And one day I'm walking down the hallway and I look in that cabinet and I see a book called According to Hoyle or the rules according to Hoyle. And I go, oh my God, there's a book. So of course I get in there I, I, and then I started doing just a little bit of research and I understood something that we had. And this is amazing because this book was written in the mid 1700s and, and Hoyle, uh, you know, lived in England and he literally wrote at that time a book around the rules to games. And I found it fascinating. I, I, I had kind of had this relationship with Valerie who was from Cincinnati, uh, grew up in Cincinnati herself and has this incredible passion for playing cards. So um, she's my resource and she's the person I've been working with. I know, uh, I, I believe Judy knows her. Um, and uh, so, so she, is my, um, she is my support in trying to work towards uh, building up that museum, but also making sure that um, we find a way to, to preserve those cards and, and, um, and, and we're working together on that. Well, officially, if there's anything that we can do to help as an organization, please have her reach out. We are, we're, like I say, we're first in line. We're first yeah, in line. Lee, we're wearing Lee, if you've got a million dollars of seed money you can send me for the museum, it'd be great. Uh, I'll give you my PayPal and we'll go from there. Then do you take Venmo? That's Venmo. You know what? I don't have Venmo, but I'm willing to start. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm trying to win the lottery. So if we, if I hit it, you're getting a phone call. Sweet. I'm trying to. Yeah. I, you know, I've, I've got to win the lottery just to keep up with Jackson Robbins index. So, oh. Well, yeah, you do. You, yeah, that's, um, you need to take a loan out for that. And, and I, I, yeah, <laughs> We're moving to a larger house. <laughs> I see. Yeah, well, that's going to be a problem. You're going to need your own museum, right? That's right. That's right. Okay, we have just a yeah. few more minutes. So if you want to Absolutely. get your questions in, please get your sure. questions into the chat. All right. Can you, you know, give us some a final thought? What do you, how do you feel about the future of playing cards? Where are we headed? What, what should we oh, be looking goodness. for? So, you know, it's funny because I always tell people how I feel about playing cards. And, you know, there's times when people will say, look, man, playing cards, they're going to be around. Um, it be only because there are some people who haven't played playing cards in a while and there's latent players. And our job is to get them much more involved back in the category. And, and, and we, we're doing a lot of work to get you know, consumers back to playing cards. I would tell you this. Playing cards are probably one of the most durable um, uh, products ever made. And the reason I say that is, um, as you guys, a lot, so many of you are historians and know so much more about the history of playing cards. But if you go back to the 11th century, they believe playing cards started somewhere in the Middle East. Uh, they moved to China 12th or 13th century. The Chinese have become infatuated with playing cards. And, and, and there will be um, uh, 3.8 billion decks of playing cards consumed in China this year. Think about that. That's a lot of paper and a lot of playing cards and a lot of, a lot of lost poker hands. <laughs> I, I look at this and I look at playing cards that they have weathered every storm that's ever come their way. And, 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 uh, you know, they were here before radio. They were here before television. They were here before uh, electronic games. They were here before the internet and, 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 and smartphones and all of the different things that a consumer can choose to do other than play cards. So the way we look at the category is, you know, we are vying for a share of consumers time and uh, leisure time. 
And we want to be their first choice for that leisure time. And that's the way we look and view the category. And uh, so from my perspective, this playing cards are never, ever going to go away. They're, but the, and they're always going to be part of a culture. And right now, like you said, there's a resurgence. Uh, this is probably the golden age of playing cards. There's no doubt. We've got to get younger people, all of us, including you guys know, even in, you know, uh, 52 plus jokers is that you've got to get younger membership to be as interested in the art form as you are. And we're here to help with that because, you know, we have to do the same thing, but as stewards of the category, that's our mission. We want to get more people playing cards and more users, keep the category healthy, keep it constantly refreshed. And if there's something new we can do, we're going to go do it. But yeah, I see the longevity of the category for, you know, uh, at least a hundred years past me. I love, I loved what you just said. And I think that if we end on that, that is the best possible note to end on. Mike, well, thank you. I appreciate it, Lee. Uh, I am so thankful that you've invited me. I really appreciate it. I really, really wish we could have done this live in Pittsburgh, but next time, wherever you choose to go live, um, I want to be part and, and hopefully be there to meet everybody. Thank you. That's awesome. We will be in Niagara next year, Niagara, New York, not the Canadian side, but the, uh, the American yeah. side. And so that means you can see the Canadian side. It's actually much nicer, much nicer to, to, to look at the Canadian side. But Michael, thank well, you. We can't thank go you there so anyway. much. Absolutely. Let's put some ones. Thank you. And, um, and uh, I look forward to seeing you guys, hopefully before Niagara, but uh, most definitely in Niagara. Thank you. Again, let's, these, these ones right here, you're going to see your screen go crazy. Those are for you. Thank well, you thank again you so, much. so much for your time. We Absolutely. Really, appreciate I really appreciate everything you've shared with us. If someone needs to get a hold of you, I, I, I mean, you're at the top and you're very busy, yeah. but if someone wants to get a hold, is, it, is there a way to get a hold of you? Yeah, so I, uh, I, I can't promise. I mean, I probably get about 200 email a day just trying to run the business. Um, so I can't promise that I'll get back to you. I think you and I email quite a bit and you know I'm usually pretty quick. I do my best to answer every email. Um, and sometimes people like my answers and sometimes they don't because I can't always, uh, uh, you know, do everything that everybody would like to see us do. Uh, but yeah, it is um, michael.slaughter, S-L-A-U-G-H-T-E-R, at cartamundi.com. So if you send me an email, I'll do my best uh, to try to get back with your answer questions. Um, and um, uh, yeah, there we go. Guys, don't flood his inbox. Don't flood his inbox. He's a busy man. But if you have questions, that's how you get a hold of him. Again, Michael, thank you so much. This has been right. fantastic. Great. Thank you, Lee. I really appreciate it. Thank you again for your time. Thanks, everybody. Look forward to meeting you in, uh, in Niagara. All right, everyone. That was our first lecture of day two. What do you think? Throw some ones in the chat. Let's see what, uh, how you're feeling about what you just saw. Was that incredible? Like how often do we get a chance to just hang out and talk with the president of the man who runs the company, makes the products that we love. Awesome.